Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked Fly Fly Fishing. And today I'm going to tie the last of the three flies in the little trout series. It's going to be the little brook trout. And uh, it's a little bit more complicated than the other two, that's why I left it to last. But let's get started and have a look at the materials. I'm going to be using the same hook as before. It's a size 4, uh, 4 extra long, 2 extra heavy. Same thread as well, uh, uni thread, black and a 6 aught. The body is white knitting yarn. Now, there are two components to the tail. We're going to be using olive bucktail, and then over that we're putting a red floss. The rib is uni French in a large gold. The throat is orange schlappen. We're going to be using four colors today, white, yellow, orange, and olive. But while we're at it, let's talk about bucktail. I normally don't get into this, but I thought since I'm using four different bucktails on this fly, it's a perfect opportunity to deal with some of the issues that we run across as we're trying to tie bucktail streamers. The hair at the top of a bucktail is solid, and usually it's pretty straight, and this is great stuff to use. But as you start picking through it and start cutting it off, you're going to get into the hollow hairs, and when you tie them on, they tie, tend to splay. And what you're going to see as I go through this is some of the hairs I'm dealing with are starting to get into the hollow stuff and it starts to splay. Now, from a fishing perspective, that might be a good thing. Uh, if uh, you've got these hollow hairs that are kind of spread out at the back end, they're going to be kicking around in the current. They're going to look rather cool to a fish. But from our perspective when we're tying it, they look pretty ugly. So, we're going to do this fly. Some of them are going to stick out, some of them won't. Uh, but it gives you an opportunity to take a look at the nature of the bucktail. The other problem we run into is sometimes you get this frizzy looking bucktail the more you buy it in the stores. And again, depends on your application, but for this sort of application, it ends up going all over the place. So um, you're looking for nice, straight, long hairs at the end of your bucktail and with no frizziness. And uh, you're going to look for a maximum number of long hairs when you pick the thing up. And that's the problem. Sometimes it's hard to find. Sometimes a lot of the bucktails, the hair is short, it's hollow, it's frizzy, and it's the only one of the color you want, and you're stuck to buy it, which is where I've been a lot of time. Anyway, so let's get into it, and let's get started. Enough about the moaning about bucktail. Let's get the thread on. Okay, let's start with the olive tail. This is a really small clump. I don't want a great big tail. It's uh, just a hint of a bit of olive at the back end. And I'm going to explain this once, and then we're just going to carry on through all the rest of the uh, usage of the bucktail rather than keep me keep repeating it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tips, uh, stroke out all the short stuff, then I'm going to go through and pick off any really uh, bent and odd-looking bits of hair. So it's reasonably good by the time I... Uh, uh, tie it on. Okay, I got a good chunk here, so I'm I'm laughing. So I've got a couple of long ones there. I'm just gonna match them up. There we go. You can stack, but I'm not stacking today because when you don't stack the end tends to taper together and actually uh, flows rather nicely. But it's your choice, you want to stack or not stack. So leave about half inch beyond the hook. Pinch loop, pull up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold that bucktail up and use it to guide the thread down all the way to just past the hook point. Don't start going around the bend. Stop before you get to the bend. The next bit we put in is the floss. I'm just going to put a, a soft wrap in here. I'm just going to pull it into position. There we go. And this is going to be half the length of the tail. Let's clip off that bucktail. We don't need it. Okay, just check your positions. That sort of rolled over a little bit, so I'll just move, tidy that up. The next bit is our tinsel. 
come in behind because we want to tie this underneath. A couple of soft wraps, pulled it into position, and finished off with some firm wraps. Now we put in our yarn. Wrap it in firmly. You'll see why in a second. Now bring your thread forward. Now we have a lump here. So if I just started winding, we'd end up with a fat back end. So what I'm going to do is going to pull on that yarn nice and tight. So it squishes down. And then when I come off the bump, I'm going to relax my grip. So now we end up with a level body. Don't get it too close to the eye of the hook because we have a lot to tie in. Now finish that up underneath the hook. Okay, the next step is to put in our uh, rib. Make one turn at the back and then start rolling forward. And if you find it's moved your tail, just twist it in the position. Again, tie it off underneath. Bring your thread back. Now we get into the uh, wing. I'm going to start with the white. And you're going to be putting on four layers of bugtail, so go very sparse. Put in basically the length of the uh, tail. Check the position. And trim off. Couple of extra wraps to keep it in place. And then bring your thread back. Now the yellow. Check the position. Now the orange. Remember when I said about the frizzy stuff? My orange is frizzy. It's the only one I have. What can you do? Check, make sure it's on top. Now we're going to put in our olive and we'll put on a little bit bigger clump than the other three. You can make sure it's sitting properly. Some nice tight wraps. Loose wraps at the back. Check your position. Now, I'm going to put my schlop it in now. I could put it in before the wing. That's your choice. I'm doing it a different way today, just to show you that there are options. Sometimes it's better afterwards, you get a better sense of proportion. Sometimes it's better before because it's easier to tie in. Now, as a result of putting the throat in afterwards, I've got it laying at a, a more of an oblique angle. Um, sometimes if you tie it in early, it tends to sort of point almost straight down. So I'm going to leave that up to you, whether you which uh, look you want, which one you like best. But uh, here's an example of where it's being tied in at the end. So the next step is to whip finish. And we put in our head cement. Start off with UV glue. And uh, don't put it on thick. If you put on UV glue thick, it is really uh, hard to get it to cure well.
Next is the uh, top coat and that keeps the uh, head of the UV glue uh, hard and glossy. Um, top coat is designed to go over UV glue. Don't buy the ordinary fingernail stuff, get top coat. There you have it, the little brook trout, all ready to go fishing. This is a great little pattern. It'll catch fish for you. And you can see I've done a couple of variations between the uh, three uh, little trout series, done them different ways. I'm not going to say which way is best. Y you pick the way that you like and go with that. Uh, I've done these in the slightly simpler version. You can add a little bit more to them and dress them up a little bit more if you want. That's your choice. But uh, these uh, patterns work the way they are. And um, as I say, go out there, have some fun with them, and they do catch fish. So enjoy them. Cheers.